as far as my work goes, I've never done anything to support the new book business or the publishing trade, you know, generally, because secondhand books, you know, they are already made, right? No publisher, no writer is getting any money for a secondhand book. And that's sort of philosophically what got me to the monkey's paw in a way when I decided to start selling books and moved to Toronto and I decided to open a shop here. Uh, at the time, you know, it was already into the 21st century and I recognized the way books were going and that books were sooner or later, and I suspected sooner, going to be uh, replaced by digital. Obviously, new books were, that was not a good proposition, right? I was convinced then and I'm even more convinced now that, that uh, new books, new bookstores and indeed the whole business of publishing books is on its way out. And the, the particular kind of, of, of material that I specialize in at this shop is, is also the sort, of, the sort of books that nobody would ever think about digitizing. I'm attracted to the ugly ducklings, the, the lost and forgotten and obscure and, uh, I mean, for all sorts of reasons, but partly because um, uh, I can ask a premium price for a book that is genuinely really, really uncommon. And also, I just like out-of-the-way information. Uh, and I think, weirdly, that stuff's more attractive to people in the 21st century than it was in the 20th. Somebody makes a book on damselflies in 1970, and it was only appealing to, like, you know, a few entomologists and a few fishermen. But now, there are just, there are just people with diverse weirdo tastes who think, wow, that's freaky. Book on damselflies, cool. You know, <laughs> uh, and I and I think that weirdly, you know, in 1970 when that book might have come out, it, it there weren't people like that. The taste for the arcane is actually uh, has actually been much heightened and sharpened by the web. Uh, you know, people send each other links to the weirdest stuff they can find, right? And when they come in my shop, those same people who are sending each other those links, they find the print version of the weird websites they like to go to, or the weird blogs that they like to read. At the same time, I recognize that people do have a real fondness for books as objects uh, and as cultural history. And with my experience with used books, I said, well, I think there's actually a future, you know, uh, uh, ironically, there's a future in used books the way there is not in new books. It's going to take us centuries to get rid of all the books that have been made. You know, there's going to be books coming out of people's, you know, private libraries and attics and basements and everything for many, many decades. I mean, they stopped making books today. There would still be books entering the marketplace 50 years from now. There's going to be what I term like the great shedding, you know, when people sort of stop using books the way we have used them for 500 years, uh, you know, relying on them for their sources of, of data, basically. And for those of us in the used book trade, there, there's going to be, it's going to be a gigantic feast of stock to choose from. Of course, there's also going to be a decline in people buying the books from us, except that, you know, I think, I feel like I have found a uh, kind of an angle. In a world of blog posts, there's no editorial oversight at all. And obviously, I mean, I'm hardly the first person to notice this, but it's a, it's a real issue. And I don't know, I don't know what's going to become of, uh, of like authority in culture. I'm sure, you know, Cambridge University Press is gonna continue to have the highest quality academic editors and, you know, put its imprint on the, you know, most serious academic texts. They'll be digital, but it, they'll, it will say, you know, issued by Cambridge University Press, and so you can trust it. But for masses of publishing, I'm not sure I mean, the, the level of noise is unbelievable. <laughs>
the thing that's interesting to me is that I think the, the way the information is actually taken in by people, like maybe even the way people's minds work, is going to be different. And there's going to be some sort of like a cognitive adjustment that will happen. Um, maybe my kids will make that adjustment, or maybe it'll be my grandchildren or great-grandchildren. Like the slow, steady A, B, C through a book method of absorbing information is going to seem utterly outmoded. And it may not even be that people are capable of thinking that way. But they may be capable of thinking a way that you and I can't even imagine. What kind of filters they're going to have to filter out all the noise, I don't know. I don't know how that's going to work.